Stand by for action. Help! Someone help! Glow like crazy. Anything can happen in the next half hour. I witnessed your crime. What crime? I commit no crime. I'm going to plant that next to some carrots. See if it affects how they grow. You murdered them. You shouldn't have done that. But like I was saying, it's not like, you know, you can just eat your dinner off radioactive waste or something crazy. Now you will pay for it. A life for a life. I mean, you know, uh, <laughs> it's, it's, that would just be completely insane. taking a look at today. Can you grow carrots in radioactive waste? So first of all, we're going to need something radioactive. Now, thankfully, uranium is actually radioactive and fairly commonly occurring. Indeed, for a long time, uranium was just some kind of useless, dense metal. However, it did find some fringe uses, like it gave nice colors as its oxides, and those could be used in glazes. And one company that used them quite a lot was called Fiestaware. So they used uranium oxide to make one of their glazes, the radioactive red. One awesome little meal. <sighs> Beautiful. Now this stuff was quite popular on the market, but about in the middle of World War II, America worked out that you could make nuclear weapons from uranium, and it went from essentially being some waste product that no one really wanted to being really valuable and a strategic material, at which point the United States government confiscated all of the stockpiles of uranium from Fiestaware. Tastes kind of tingly. Oh, that is zesty. And then went on to strip the uranium-235 that they needed to make nuclear weapons. However, after that, Fiestaware continued making radioactive red, but using depleted uranium. You know, the stuff that had been stripped of all its U-235. So the depleted uranium was essentially just a, a waste product again. But it did still give the nice orange colored glazes. And it was just as radioactive. Me, however, I'm a purist on this sort of thing. So I actually tracked down some of the original radioactive red Fiestaware. This stuff was made before the nuclear age, before the first nuclear bomb or reactor had been made. And naturally, because I'm, I'm deeply sensitive to vegetable rights, I wanted to make certain before I experimented on uh, plants that I'd at least tested it on humans first. It's really important that we don't offend the vegetable rights militants here. No, oh, a hundred times background. Two hundred times background. I'm not even, I'm not even trying. We'll find that the cat is similarly radioactive. So this is the thing with um, this radioactivity, is from this sort of distance, there is basically no, none of the particles that, that are coming off this, this radioactivity, these high energy particles, they don't actually go that far. Right? So by the time you're up here, there are no particles making it up this far. Um, if I get down a little closer, however, you will see that uh, it starts getting a little hotter. So you're getting, you know, some of the radioactive, par radioactive particles are making it up this high. And once you get down really close, it's sort of honkingly radioactive. There's loads of these radioactive particles coming off. But they're only really short-lived. You know, these radioactive particles that come off, they only live for, um, you know, milliseconds, that sort of thing. So, you know, all the knives and forks, all this sort of stuff that's been sat, being irradiated by this uranium plate, they will have zero activity. Absolutely zero. You just don't get anything. Um, the only way that you can get exposed to the radioactivity of this orange glaze here is if you actually eat the orange glaze. And the thing about the orange glaze is it's been on this plate for some 70 years. And it's still there. It's, you see where the uranium is, it's the orange stuff. 
right? It's not gone anywhere. So if all the uranium is still on the plate, then no one's eaten any of it. And even if you were to eat this stuff, it's insoluble. So it would just go through you and it would pass through in a day or so, and then you wouldn't have any more exposure to it. So yeah, that is radioactive red, which is why it tastes a little tingly. Ah. And just so we're clear, no, I'm being sarcastic. You cannot taste radiation. But of course, my exposure here was modest. What if I would grow plants right next to something that radioactive, where they're not exposed to it for, you know, a couple of minutes or something, but for months? Surely that's got to have some effect, right? Okay, so background is usually about 0.1-ish, but um, this, guy's, this guy's been through the wars a bit. Anyway, so what we're going to look at first is this stuff here, which is uranium glass. And if I put the uranium glass there, you can usually just about detect a little bit of extra radiation coming off the uranium glass. But the most cool thing that the uranium glass does is when it's under a UV light, it glows like an absolute son of a bitch. I mean, it just is incredibly fluorescent. It's, um, yeah, I mean, this is like, it looks like your sort of classical radioactive waste. Um, in the, it, it glows like crazy. It's got nothing to do with the radioactivity, of course. Um, but anyway, so that gets you up from your sort of background of 0.1-ish, 0.2-ish, uh, to maybe sort of two times background, which is kind of interesting. You can then go over to your more traditional radioactive rocks, which... Um, so we can find it. Ah, there, there we go. This, this looks. This looks about right. This is sort of pitch blendy, the sort of typical black ore of uranium. And if you stick that on the on the guy counter, you'll find that. Yeah, yeah, you're getting up to ten times background, that sort of thing. Let's move those off to the side. Um, then, of course, we get to the stuff I was eating my food off earlier. It uh, doesn't seem that bad. Until, of course, you go like this. And then it looks a little more toasty. So, background. This is... If you, let's take background as point 0.1. So this is 150 times background here. Okay. So let's move that off to the side for a second. Now we get on to the uranium minerals. So this is orchinite. And this is tobamite. It may interest you to know that since the initial use of cobamite more than two of our centuries ago, no attacking vessel has survived the attempt. Which don't look that impressive in themselves until of course you put a UV light on them and then these things just they are they glow like crazy right yeah much 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 more than the uranium glass well you wouldn't really know but they do if, if you if you eyeball them these these glow like 10 times more than this stuff it's just the camera really didn't sh show it up that well. Cool. Um, so, what are these like on the Geiger counter? Well, if we go for the Orchonite first, uh, you'll find that this stuff is a little toastier. Um, uh, it's 200 times background, yeah, 300 times background-ish. Yeah, so 350 times background on that one. Whereas the Tobamite, of course, is even hotter. Much hotter. It's like 500 times background, 600 times back, 800 times background. And these are just naturally occurring minerals, of course. This is just, um, just what you get. Anyway, so if you refine that, you get to... This stuff, which is uranium peroxide. So if the camera will find a focus on that, that's awesome. So this is uranium peroxide. 
and it's a bit yellow sadly very sadly it just doesn't glow doesn't have the same fluorescent properties as the other minerals now chemically this stuff is virtually identical to yellow cake which i'd previously mentioned in a video on the dumbest thing ever said about radioactivity i'm arming you with knowledge that's invaluable i've researched this all extensively over many years now in order to really wrap your mind around all of that I think that Dixie cup says it all a Dixie cup full of this yellow cake from that 40 mile pit you put that in a restaurant you kill everybody there within an hour for the next four billion years like I said earlier just keep filling that restaurant up if I had a cup up 238 here, I would die before I finished that set. So this is uranium peroxide. Wow, I must be a superman or something. I did more than a sentence before dying. You put that cup of 238 in a restaurant, it'll kill everybody in the restaurant inside of an hour. Even if you just walked in and left, they would die an hour later. And that would go on for 4.5 billion years times 10, because of the way it decays, right? But of course, in terms of actual radioactivity, it's um this thing is alive uh are we at 200 times background 300 times background 400 now money will shift uncomfortably in their chair at watching me hold something at 400 times background but let me tell you i'm not that freaked out by this when people get on planes and you get above most of the atmosphere the radiation levels that you get up there are about 30 times background. This is why you should never turn these things on during a flight. They are absolutely crazy. So, me holding this for, say, a minute is about equal to the radiation dose I would get for being on a plane for about 10 minutes. In fact, the plane is arguably much worse because that's a whole body dose, while this, I'm just irradiating my fingers. 400 times background. Okay, so 450 times background-ish is what you're at when you're right next to this stuff. So, here is a question. How well would carrots grow right next to something like this at about 400 times background? <laughs> So for this, we'll need a pot, and we'll need to fill it with... There we go. Get it wet for growing. Awesome. Now I want it to be about the right depth, the, the same depth as the seeds I'm going to plant. So these are my carrot seeds, and I want to stress I've never grown carrots before in my life. Let's see how we're doing on the radiation levels. Yeah, it's pretty decent. So right up against it, we're... Oh. Yeah, getting on for uh, 100 times background. So I'm going to know which way to orientate things, so I need some marks on here. I'm just going to melt a little bit at 90 degrees. So about there, somewhere. I don't even know what carrot seeds look like. Oh, they're tiny. Those are my carrot seeds. There's quite a variation in the size of the carrot seeds, it must be said. But I'm going to try and pick them all about the same size. Now, I have to plant all of these at two centimeters deep, so I'm going to put them all in at exactly the same depth. So we're going to have one really close by. And then after that, we're going to have them about two centimeters, an inch or so apart. And this one starts off, yeah, this one is right, basically right next to the uranium. This one is a centimeter further out. I'm going to go for two per hole to give me better statistics. Give me two for the next least radioactive hole. And give me two for the outside hole. 
the fact. 12 holes, 24 carrots have been planted. So I'm just going to close up the holes and the experiment has begun. So at the moment we've got a sort of sensible background and uh, so it's like a oh, hundred times background at least in there somewhere um, as you can see the carrots don't seem too bothered by it and that's all that is massive time lapse runs for well, uh, uh, over a month so far. So let's bring these boys over here. And let's do a little bit of harvest. So there were three uh, plant settings, if you like. There were two done at the closest you could do. Um, there were two slightly further away and two at the furthest away. So, let's start with the ones that are furthest away to begin with, okay? Now, I've never harvested a carrot in my... Oh, actually, maybe I did when I was a kid. But... Uh, huh. Okay, indeed there are. <laughs> One carrot, okay. That's the furthest away. And another guy who is furthest away. And then we're going into the intermediate range. The intermediate ones are here. And we have two of those, excellent. And then we're going for the ones that were closest to the uranium, which uh, is that one. Oh, he is smaller. And I'll be buggered. I'll be buggered. Now, it could, of course, just be that... This is, you've got to bear in mind that some of these didn't get as much light as some of the others. So let's see if this pattern holds going all the way around, shall we? So let's now come up to our next batch. What? Oh, this is bizarre. It looks... Like there's only one who's furthest away there. Should be two, but I only see one. Now it looks like there are two in the middle. And then there are two closest to the uranium who are actually... Oh no, he's not. <laughs> he's quite chunky. Okay. So, but there was, there was one missing. One missing. Right, let's go for round number three. Oh, baby. Baby. 
and they're both tiny both small at this this position then there's the mid-range who is also kind of small ah oh, he's, he's, he's a good one and then we got the ones nearest the uranium who are also kind of small so and then we come to the last batch uh, and just so we're clear where we're at yeah okay and these are the two who are furthest away who are two nice respectable sized currents they go down there and then we're going to go for the next closest there's a little stumpy oops so there's lock this up a bit then we get the two next ones in who are sort of okay-ish and then we get to the two that were right by the uranium right you see just how close these boys were and <laughs> they look pretty happy for carrots okay excellent so we now have our complete set if I had to guess um, it's more related to how much light each one of them got than how close they were to the uranium so of course none of these carrots here will have any radioactivity in them at all you know for you um, for the simple reason that what causes radioactivity is nuclei sort of eh, going boom and releasing high energy particles and all of that radioactivity is actually in the uranium so unless you had managed to get this to leak somehow and get absorbed into the carrots then there's you know once the once this gives off its high energy particle and it stops that's it the hazard's gone so um you know once once you're once you buy it it's fairly radioactive once it's moved away it's not anymore right let's chop these down a bit radioactive zone a to begin with with three tiers um, right next to the uranium let's see roughly what it was 10 times background so it's somewhere between 10 times background and that's 50 100 so 100 to 10 times background is basically where these currents were grown okay so this is now what it looks like when they're all on plates those are the least radioactive, those are intermediately radioactive, and those, those are the most radioactive. So the most, medium, and least. Honestly, I wasn't entirely sure what to expect here. I suspected the higher radiation levels might affect the germination rates, but apparently there's no detectable effect. And in terms of how they grew, well, again, there's no real obvious pattern between the radiation levels and how well the carrots grow which is maybe not surprising you know in the the top radiation level here which is maybe a hundred or so times background is only about five times the radiation level that you might get on an airplane <laughs> bizarre thing is of course whilst i've actually got quite a lot of experience in handling radioactive nasties of one sort or another i have no experience in growing vegetables uh, so maybe this experiment could be improved on um, significantly. But then again, you can only do one experiment like this per year. And for a first attempt, I'm pretty happy with how this one turned out. You murdered them. You shouldn't have done that. Now you will pay for it. The only thing that remains is, do these carrots taste any different? So that's the video today. If you enjoyed it, do give it a thumbs up. Below you'll find links to my Amazon store where you'll find all sorts of scientific goodies like Geiger counters. Or of course, if you really like the work of this channel and want to support it directly, you can do it through Patreon. And uh, thanks for watching. <laughs>